Welcome to the next video in our series about forest management. In the previous episode, we learned about the harvesting stage of the forest management cycle. Today, we will cover the final step in the forest management cycle, the preparation for planting. Brian is going to explain controlled burning, and Madison will tell us all about mechanical site prep and spraying. Hello, my name is Brian Ardall. I'm the senior forester here at our North Bend Timberlands office. After harvest, there is a lot of work to be done to prepare a site for planting. Logging produces lots of small woody debris called slash. This material can make it difficult to plant seedlings and will act as excess fuel in the event of a wildfire. We often treat sites with controlled burning after harvest to help cut down on the volume of the slash. Fire is a natural part of the forest ecosystem and a very useful tool in this stage of forest management. There are two main methods of controlled burning that we use, pile burning and broadcast burning. All burning activities are done outside the natural fire season. In Oregon, burns are conducted between October and June. Pile burning involves gathering slash into piles and lighting them. These fires are easy to contain and very effective at decreasing fuel availability across sites with flatter terrain. But this method is difficult on steeper slopes that are inaccessible to the heavy equipment needed to make the piles. Broadcast burning is a low intensity controlled burn across an entire site. We often use this strategy on steeper slopes where pile burning is less practical. Before a broadcast burn, our team digs boundary fire lines around the entire burn area that act as fuel breaks to keep the fire from spreading. Then, they use drip torches to light small sections of the site at a time, always making sure to direct the fire uphill and towards previously burned sections. That reduces the risk of the fire getting out of control and burning into other areas. Before any controlled burning, our foresters apply for a burn permit with the state. Then they contact smoke management at the Oregon Department of Forestry on the day of the burn to request permission. If the wind is blowing towards populated areas, the burn will be postponed to avoid air quality issues. In North Carolina and Virginia, site prep burning is less common, but prescribed fire can be used to control invasive species. Foresters that conduct these activities are state certified burn managers, and each burn has a permit approval process to address smoke management implications. In addition to making planting easier and reducing fuel loads, controlled burning is also beneficial to the soil. As fire breaks down organic matter, it returns the nutrients to the soil like a natural fertilizer. You can see the result of this in planted sites where trees that are growing on top of a burned slash pile are more vigorous than their neighbors just outside of the burned area. My name is Madison Dazarn, and I am the Forest Harvest Operations Technician for the Roanoke Timberlands. Before a site is ready to be planted, we also use mechanical and chemical site prep tools. Some sites have excessive soil compaction that require the use of machinery to fluff the soil back up. In our Roanoke Timberlands, our foresters rely more on herbicide application and mechanical site preparation than prescribed burning. Due to the generally flatter and lower elevations in the southeast, many sites require a large plow to raise a bed elevated from the standing water months before planting that promotes better seedling survival and initial growth. Control of competing vegetation is key to ensuring adequate survival of planted trees. Herbicide applications are a common practice at this stage to help control the grasses and shrubs for long enough to get the seedlings established in the ground. Just like in the early stand management stage, precautions are taken to prevent any potential negative impacts of herbicide application. Buffers are left around waterways and neighboring properties and the type and amount of chemicals used is tightly regulated. Sites are required to be replanted within two years of harvest. We work quickly to do as much as we can to prepare before the planting of seedlings. It typically takes 12 to 15 months to complete all these site prep activities. Controlled burns, mechanical site prep, and herbicide application are all important tools that our foresters can use to prepare a site for planting after harvest. It's all about giving the next generation of forests the best start possible. Thank you for joining us on this video series as we walk through the forest management cycle. This system is crucial not just for the forest products industry and Roseburg operations, but to the entire forest ecosystem and carbon cycle. Wood is the most renewable building material in the world, as long as it comes from sustainably managed forests where foresters protect all forest resources, cultivate healthy trees, harvest with care, and replant to start the cycle over again. 
We take great pride in our forests and the sustainable wood products we make. It's one way we help make lives better from the ground up.